this is a PowerPoint slide for your uh, uh, um, lecture on the right to equality. You see my email address on the screen. Should you have any queries after the um, after watching this short presentation and after attending the lectures in Public Law 200 on uh, equality, if you still have queries, either approach me during um, to make an appointment to come and see me or um, email me at that address. The overview of the lecture, uh, in other words what I'm doing today on um, PowerPoint in this uh, video and uh, what I'll discuss in class. So I'll start with um, you know, a couple of explanations uh, that you need to, to understand clearly once you get to the class discussion and then the exam question how to practically apply um, the, the, the principles to a problem, you need to understand a couple of these principles of formal and substantive equality, differentiation and discrimination, fair and unfair discrimination, direct and indirect discrimination. I'll also point out as we go along how these different principles relate to Section 9 in the Bill of Rights. When we then get to the class, I'll have a couple of extra uh, problems that you won't see on these slides. I'll discuss a couple of new problems in class using um, these principles and the exam question will then again be a similar problem. Not one that we discussed in class, a new problem, but if you uh, watch this, uh, s these slides, this presentation carefully, uh, attend the lecture to clarify any questions you may still have uh, before the exam, you really shouldn't have any difficulty in answering the, the problem-based question uh, on the uh, Hawkson versus Lane um, test that I will explain in a, uh, in a few minutes' time. Alright, so the first concept that you need to, to uh, understand is the difference between so-called formal and substantive equality. Formal equality is easier to apply, but it may lead to uh, results that we don't really want to achieve. So formal equality says the same rule applies to everyone, irrespective of their specific circumstances, while substantive equality says we should look at the outcome of a particular rule, and if the outcome is not what we had in mind, then we need to adjust the rule to take people's actual uh, position into account and to, uh, in some cases, adjust the rule, make exceptions or put special measures in place to address the, the outcome we, we wanted to avoid. Take the example of a guide dog uh, in a shopping centre the rule will probably be at most uh, malls there will probably be a rule no animals allowed so formal equality will say irrespective of the circumstances irrespective of who visits the shopping mall the rule is clear no animals allowed so if a blind shopper arrives with a guide dog and if you adhere to formal equality uh, the outcome will be to prevent the blind shopper from entering the shopping center the rule is no animals allowed a guide dog is an animal, so the shopper will be told you must leave. Substantive equality will say this is not the outcome we want to achieve. Uh, it's a particular situation we want to address and we will tell the blind shopper, in your case, the other rule, or they will, in your case there will be an exception to the rule and you will be allowed to bring the guide dog into the shopping center while no one else will be allowed to do that. What we refer to as affirmative action uh, in South Africa uh, fits into this thinking around substantive equality as well. The term affirmative action does not appear anywhere in Section 9.2, but that's how most people have come to understand what Section 9.2 is about. I will explain in a, um, a bit later in this presentation how Section 9.2 should be understood. And then that last bullet on this slide just confirms that our constitutional court adheres to a substantive notion of equality. Here's a, 
a silly little diagram to try and explain what uh, the difference between formal and substantive equality. This is an example of formal equality. You will see that each of the three little people in this um, presenter in this diagram each received one box. Formal equality will say you all get the same box of equal size. The idea here is that um, there's a wall. Now again if you see that wall as a structural barrier to true equality in a, in a real equal society we won't have the wall um, but for this exercise let's just uh, try and, 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 and follow through on the on the thought process here so formal equality says irrespective of your circumstances you each get a box the stick man on the left can't see over the wall the one in the middle barely makes it over the one on the right doesn't really need the box but he gets one in any case the next diagram I hope you can see what's going on there this is an example of substantive equality the stick person on the right does not need a box to see over the wall so we don't give him anyone any box the stick person in the middle needs one box to be able to see across the wall and the stick person on the left needs two boxes to see across the wall so substantive equality says let's look at the particular circumstances and let's adjust the rule so formal equality says we all get one box substantive equality says let's look at what you actually need to achieve the best possible outcome the uh, section 9 of the constitution prohibits unfair discrimination so when is something discrimination and when is it something else differentiation is when the state or a person makes a distinction that does not involve a prohibited ground and I'll get to what that means what these prohibited grounds are the example I give there is that um, if you make a, a purely so-called economic decision for example to have different VAT rates for different products that would be an example of differentiation as no prohibited ground is at play discrimination is when you make a distinction based on a prohibited ground um, the prohibited grounds are as they appear in section 93 of the Constitution so when you go through these slides or pause at this point get your Constitution page to section 93 and and just read through section 93 and, um, and and look at what those different grounds are all the so-called listed grounds as they appear in section 93 in the Constitution it doesn't mean that if you can't find a, gr a ground in section 93 doesn't mean that there's no discrimination then it's still possible to recognize um, discrimination on grounds not listed the test is then that if the ground is such that it has the potential to impair the fundamental dignity of someone or to affect them in a comparably serious manner that you would then also recognize uh, such, a, such a case as discrimination the, the main point to remember here differentiation is when you distinguish not on a prohibited ground discrimination is when you distinguish on a prohibited ground whether that ground is listed in section 9.3 or uh, recognized via the dignity test in that last bullet on this slide here we explain um, what we mean with the unlisted grounds in a bit more detail so the test is so all right let's one step back if you if you go through section 93 and you can't find the ground um, there that that your client would would need to to found a case on discrimination and look at those bullets there take HIV AIDS or um, HIV AIDS status status HIV AIDS status is not listed in section 93 does that therefore mean that if you distinguish between people in, in living in South Africa if you distinguish between them based on their HIV or AIDS status does that mean it's not discrimination or socioeconomic status their ability to to have a dignified life with access to all the, the sources does that mean that if you 
make a distinguish a, a distinction between people based on any of these grounds does that mean that this is not discrimination then? how do you assist people if what happened to them happened to them based on a ground not listed in section 93 the test is then whether those other grounds are based on attributes which have the potential to impair the fundamental dignity of someone I will return to this um, theme in class as well to make sure that you understand the difference between the so-called unlisted grounds and the listed grounds the, the, the ones that I've listed here are all potential new grounds to recognize even though they do not appear in section 93 in the Constitution we will look at all of these examples in class uh, whether these amount to discrimination or differentiation you can obviously pause here or, or write them down but I'll return to all of these in class I'm not answering them now we will answer these in class why is it important to distinguish between differentiation and discrimination the reason is that there's a different test to apply if the state differentiates between people then there's a specific test that applies if it's discrimination a different test applies there you see a quote from the Hawkson versus Lane uh, constitutional court case those paragraphs are the only ones that you need to know for this case for the exam so if the state differentiates then the test is that the differentiation must be rational there must be a rational link between the differentiation and a legitimate governmental purpose if it is discrimination then the discrimination will only be acceptable if it amounts to fair discrimination on this slide you will also see that discrimination on a listed ground is presumed to be unfair and that last uh, bullet shows that even if you have established that unfair discrimination has taken place it still remains uh, one last step still remains as, as you will recall from this so-called two-stage approach of constitutional litigation uh, first you need to establish the breach of the right if a right has been breached then the section 36 test always still applies I'll come back to this slide in class as well so that you have that we make sure that you understand the difference between differentiation and discrimination the presumption of unfairness and then the relationship between unfairness and the section 36 test 